in order to get the blues, and it's a lot of fun, let me tell you. But now we have relocated into Kentucky, and so we're hoping to get more into that. Paul's going to help me with that. <laughs> but we have um, channel cats up there, we have bigger flatheads up there. Um, my husband actually has, he's third in the state, holding the record in the Rock River up there for biggest flathead at 77 pounds, I believe it was. So that's what I like to do, is I like to target the big chunky flathead. My biggest is blue cats. Um, I love the fight of a uh, flathead because they will put a fight on you that is unbelievable. Um, a blue cat normally will take off and you know you have to struggle, especially if it's a 50 plus. I mean you have to struggle to get it back to your boat. A flathead, when he starts to come up, he is going to do everything he can to bring you out of that boat and down in that water. But uh, I fished all my life. Uh, professionally, I started fishing about three years ago uh, for monster catfish. And the reason being, uh, my husband, uh, Ken Smith, he retired from TWRA a year ago today, actually. And uh, I was at work and he had been fishing and uh, sent me a picture of a 50 plus blue, fat, blue uh, catfish and I thought, oh no, uh -uh, this ain't gonna work. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm going fishing, you, you go back to work or something. <laughs> so he started basically, uh, he's taught me a lot. Um, some people have made comments that, you know, she can't catch fish unless her husband does it for her. No, he doesn't. He doesn't jump out of the boat. He don't swim up under the, you know, in the water, look the fish, and come back in. But he's taught me how to, to drive a boat, to, you know, correctly. Being a TWRA officer, prom I promise you, I know how to operate a boat. And uh, he's taught me a lot about where to look the fish, how to look the fish. Um, he's taught me a lot, and I've learned a lot. I, I started going out on my own, and because um, I'm not keen when he starts to try to tell me things, it's like, you know, so I go out and, and, and try to learn on my own. I can stand it, and in every video we make, you can hear him in the background saying, uh, loosen your drag, get in time, get in time, and, and, and if you ever see, yeah, real now, or, 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 or slow down. If you ever see me on a video, if you ever see me put my head towards you, that's the exorcist look. It's like, shut up, I'm not, I've got this. But uh, I enjoy fishing with him because he, he uh, and a lot of people ask me, uh, why do we not see Ken catch a fish? First of all, he's not fast <coughs> Uh, second of all, I trip him if he tries to catch you know, one of my fishing poles. But uh, he likes to see me catch him. He, he enjoys seeing the enjoyment from me. And, and I tell you, it is one of the most exciting things um, that's really ever been in my life other than my child and my grandchildren and naturally my family. Um, I love catfishing. I hope I can live to be 174 and still be out there catfishing. I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see more women get involved because you know it's not hard. It, it, it's not hard. Yeah, don't don't be afraid. <coughs> it, it, and it's fun. It uh, is fun, and it gives you time with your spouse and right and your kids and all and that. get your kids out there because our our children. My, my son is grown, uh, but my grandchildren, they're facing an awful, ugly world, you know, 10, 15 years from now. I want them out in the great outdoors, not just fishing, uh, deer hunting, you know. I, Ken can take my oldest grandson out and show him plants in the woods, you know, wild plants that's good for your health. Or, you know, just different things. And, and I want them to know that because, you know, we're losing our uh, generation to technology. And, you know, technology is a great thing, but 
our roads are, you know, the way I was raised and a lot of you people were raised, that to me is the way to be raised. You know, gardening, farming, and whatnot, fishing. How do you catch catfish? With a fishing pole. How do you catch catfish? <laughs> um, when you target blue cats, what are you looking for? When, uh, when I target blue cats, blue cats like current. Uh, they don't like a lot of current, real strong current. The last two years we've had, our waters have been really messed up on the Tennessee River. Last year, we were pulling 450 cubic feet per, per second. You know, that was way too much. It stresses them. But, uh, you know, if you've got an average uh, water flow current, uh, they stay in the current. They stay on the ledge of, of the river. Uh, a lot of, uh, I catch a lot of mine at the mouths of creeks where it goes, fall, drops off into the river. Uh, you gotta look for uh, deep holes, small deep holes, you know, most of the winter time. In the winter time they stack up, summertime they scatter. Um, you just, uh, you turn your sonar on, you know, just like you do for any fish, basically. And that's like a flathead too. They, they like, you know, the, the ledges and the current seams and, and if you don't have the expensive sonar and all the electronics, you can still know what to look for. Right. Look for eddies in the water. Look for <coughs> bends you know, in the river. Uh, yeah, bends in the river. You know, right where the, the creeks meet the the river openings. Um, look for you know trees that are submerged. You know, part of the trees coming out of the water. You know, there's Log a jams. down there, and that's where a lot of your big flatheads like to hide. They they they're the bully of the river. They they're cranky. They're just that's where they like to hide. They come out. They grab their food. That's where they, they just want to stay. So even if you don't have the expensive electronics, <coughs> you don't need them to fish. You don't need all the fancy equipment. Like she has different sponsors than what I do. There ain't nothing wrong with hers. There ain't nothing wrong with right. me. You know, we, we've put in hard work in order to earn them. We, we've earned our right and put in our time with no electronics and standing on a bank with our rod and reel. You know, it was home. Yeah, yeah. So don't think that you have to have all that expensive stuff in order to look for the big <coughs> fish, because you don't. And you know she can tell you what to look for on top of water as well as what I can. Even though they're they're both catfish, but they're two different kinds they're, they're of catfish. Flat. And like a flathead, they're a side swimmer. Mm -hmm. They they don't just you know go down the water. You know they're they're moving. And then. Uh, that leads, you know, when your pole is in your boat and you see it move and it just kind of taps a little bit, they've got it. But then when they start to, you know, go sideways, that's when it don't move. And then all of a sudden they're going to move forward and then it goes down and then it goes down. And, uh, and when you want to take, I'm, I'm a firm believer in setting hook. I don't use, I do a little bit of circle hooks, but I like a J hook. I like to know. I've launched into that. <laughs> Other people like circle hooks. It, it's it's your preference. You know what you use. If you catch fish, then you're doing nothing wrong. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's just different opinions on how different people fish with different objects. I have cascade. I've got my root. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter. But that's kind of what you're looking for in the water. That's kind of, you know, where you need to go in order to target a lot of the bigger fish. And one thing she hit on about the flathead, nine out of 10 times, other than a channel catfish doing that to your pole, I, I don't want to set my hook because I would throw myself out of the boat. Well, know, yeah, I you got to have more height to you. Yeah, I got yeah, to yeah, talk. Yeah, I'm too short. <laughs> I'm too sure. But uh, to, when you know you have uh, got a flathead on your the end of your line, uh, it's, it's similar to a chow cat except it's stronger and slower. Uh, you know, when it starts doing that, don't touch it. You know, when you see it go down and stay down, that's when you start reeling in and the fight is on. A blue cat, you don't, you know when you've got a blue cat because that 
that probably goes, whoop, whoop, you've got it. You know, a flathead, you, you've got to kind of wait. You don't want to reel too soon because, you know, he, he may put it in his mouth and he may sit and lay down there on the bottom with it for five minutes with it in his mouth and not move. But you'll know when he does take it and take off with it because it'll, you know, and then it might get still, but when it goes down, you know you've got it. You know, that, that's really about the only difference, you know. Right, right. And if you do slam one, don't panic. I mean, no. don't, don't just crank, you know. And I'm the world's worst. When my pole gets that water, it's like, ah, I want that fish in there. <laughs> you know, kind of like that old buck favor thing, you know? Or yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, I will have to say, Ken has is, is been working with me a lot about not, yeah. you know, because I want that fish. I want to see how big it is. I want him in that boat. <laughs> you know, you want to bring it up and reel down. And when it takes off to go back down, and a flathead will. Yes, yes. Flatheads, they want to be back down. They don't want to be in your boat. They don't want anything to do with that. They, they, they do not up. want to come to the light. They want to be back down where they were. So they're going to go back down. Let them go. Don't give them a whole lot of line to no. get tangled up under the, the log jam or whatnot. But, you know, let them wear themselves out. Right. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, take it and try and stop them because you're going to snap a line. Because they're in structure, generally. And if that very strong, taut line catches that structure, then you're going to snap off and you will be angry. You will be sick. You will be in the, yes, the, the, the river, river crying, like, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it, it is important to, to know that you will know you've got a flathead or you've got a blue cat. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. I believe the difference it's, yeah. in the in the pole, the way it bends, and then the way they swim too. Because when I hooked into that big pole, <clears throat> it, it was just all over and up and down, and this side of the boat, and this side of the boat. Yeah, climb is generally back to the bottom. Yeah. They'll move a little. Right? Yeah, and, and what's amazing about flathead in some of my videos, it, it's like you know you're reeling, and, and then it's like. I think I lost it, or you know, and then here he comes, here he comes, and you can tell every, the first two foot that you're starting to bring him up, he knows what's happening, <laughs> and, and he will know right back down, down. <laughs> right back down. And I've had him take and pull me to. If it hadn't been for the motor, I was in the water. You know, that's how strong they are. When they head back down, you better be ready. You know, you set your stance because you're going to be the fight side. It, it, it's a, it, it's just a feeling that it's almost undescribable. It is. It is. It, it so is. now, what bait are you prone to using? Um, for blue catfish in my area, and everybody's area is different. Oh, all parts of the country are very different. Right, and in New Johnsonville, Tennessee, we live in Humphreys County. Uh, TVA has shut down, so the skipjack are far and few between. My bait, go-to bait, is gizzard shad. Love them. If I could fish with gizzard shad, Very popular every popular. time, I, that's the only thing I'd use. For flathead, I use try to use live bluegill. Um, where we're at, they mostly bite late in the evening, you know, when they wake up, you know, in early spring. They, they come out right at sunset, and you can guarantee you can fish them, you know, five times. Right. But uh, for blue cat, I had rather have uh, gizzard shad. I want fresh gizzard shad, and we try to go catch our bait before we go fishing. You know, we load up, we, we unload the boat in the water, we try to catch our bait and go fishing. Sometimes you can't do that, so, you know, you try to have Skipjack, gizzard shad, you know, and that and putting them up is right. You can't you know, put them up right. There's no, you know, it's just See, yeah. Them. And I prefer having live shad. Was yeah, a nice yeah. big live shad for a flathead is a very good bait to use. But I have a funny story. You guys are gonna love this because God bless my husband. I love him to death. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 a two-day tournament for Bass Pro Shop up in Elmhurst. 
And there was 45 <laughs> boats that was entered into this tournament. And we have our bait tank in the garage like every other big fisherman does. And we have our bluegill and we've got our shad in there and we're gonna go fishing and everything. So we go fishing and all that. And we have eight pounds of fish that were the first day. Eight pounds. We are 38 out of 45 boats. We're not real happy. But somehow or other, my wonderful Matt, turned the bait cooler on, which is a freezer, and froze all of our live bait. That's it. So, <laughs> lack of options, we go ahead, okay, this is what we gotta do. So we're trying anything, because we have no live bait now. So I said, you know what, I think I'm going to eat. You know, he takes and he cuts up his shad, and he catches a walleye. Well, that doesn't work in a catfish tournament. So I said, you know what, I'm going to cut up this bluegill. And I cut up, and I caught a flathead. We moved. And I caught a bigger flathead. And we moved. And I caught another flathead. And we ended up fifth out of 45 boats on day two on cut bluegill. It, it doesn't always guarantee. I mean, right. you know, one day they could be, on Friday they could be biting on shad, but Saturday they want bluegill. And I'm going to tell y'all uh, another good bite. Uh, a lot of people are knocking them, is Asian carp. Asian, now, I've used that on Wheeler. Asian carp make excellent bite. And I won a tournament at Pickwick on Asian carp. How do you uh, get them? It's a blast. Thanks for asking, Ken Smith. <laughs> uh, you get in your boat and uh, you go to the shallower water and you kind of bog down and they will just jump right in your lap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, they will. It's almost as fun as fishing. You know, you just gotta make sure they'll hit you in the head or, or the chest or something. You know? We did that one day and I took my Steve Douglas net and I was on the front of the boat. It was like, all right, I'm ready. They do that in Illinois. It's the Hillbilly Catfish Tournament. They have nets out there. Oh, and yeah, there is. And all the Asian carp just jump up and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I caught one, but the rest of them. Yeah, and, and I have a funny story. Um, I don't want to be known just for the 88 pound catfish I caught, but um, in the video, after I had caught the fish and we were going to weigh it, Ken hooks it up and uh, Ken says, he broke my net. I wouldn't get none there because I was just ecstatic. And then he says, uh, did you see that? He broke my net. I said, wouldn't get none there. Well, he said it again and I said, I don't care about your net. Look at my fish. <laughs> so, and this was on like December the 31st. And then in February, we went to the Catfish Conference for the first time. And uh, Steve Douglas gave me this net. I mean, this is a pretty expensive net. And uh, I, sometimes I get scared out on the water, especially if I back talk Ken, because I can fit in here. <laughs> but if I catch another big one, I've got a net big enough, and it's not going to bend, it's not going to break. And, you know, and it's like Michelle said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the most expensive stuff. You, you know, I caught that 88 on a Walmart rib, uh, rod. Uh, you don't have to have the most expensive stuff. You, you know, do what you're doing if it's working. Uh, the things that I do use, I use them because I like them. I don't use them because, oh, I want them to sponsor me or, oh, they're my sponsors. Uh, this is a Steve R Douglas Monster Rod Holder. I also had a Walmart rod holder and had a fish break completely in half. I don't want to lose a fish because I would jump in that water and chase that pole. You know, luckily he swam into another line and I, I got to reel my pole back in. And you know, I talked with the fish for a minute and he didn't like what I had to say. But uh, these are, you know, you know, everybody has their own opinions. To me, this is the strongest, best rod holder that, that you could have, that I can use. And then uh, I use tackle cat hooks, I use nine off hooks. Uh, I tied this up this morning so it wouldn't take me. Like if I was uh, dragging, and these are dragging weights that has a rattle, and they're a little bit heavier because we have 
a lot of current is in Tennessee, on the Tennessee River. But you just took this up to your uh, sink or slide and tie this up, and this keeps your, the demon dragon keeps this kind of floating, and your bait is floated while you're dragging, which, you know, there's different ways to fish. Uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna try to just blow everybody out of sponsorship. Jerry Drawery, and he makes a bloodline drift weight. And what this does is this empty space, you can fill it up with fish oil, uh, fish blood, um, you know, just whatever you can come up with. That's, <coughs> it's legal, but you, you can't chunk. And, and it adjusts to how much you want to flow at each time. Whether you want a lot of scent going out or a little bit. And uh, that's another product. And, and this one he makes is more for like um, drill fishing. Um, during the summertime, we do a lot of drill fishing because the catfish scatter. And uh, same, it's the same basic thing. You just fill it up with what you want, hook it up to your sinker slide, and fish away. Keep your fingers crossed. And <laughs> hold your mouth right. I think that's what my dad used to tell me. Do not hold your mouth right. <laughs> you know, and, and Michelle's got different things that she uses. Yeah, and see, I, I prefer the J, like I said before, because I like to set my own hook with the flatheads. I use the AI offset J, slide and paper tag those two, the hooks that I have. Again, nothing wrong with the I mean, Walmart, ask for your local sporting store. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have that. Um, I use uh, a Snell. I smell my own hooks, in which a lot of Women that we have noticed that fish with their husbands or spouses or significant others, yeah, they, they don't know how to do any of that stuff. And, it, and it's really simple. And, and wives, or, you know, go to your husbands and say, hey, can you show me how to do it? And it kind of boosts his ego a little bit. You know, well, sure, I can show you how to do that. You know, it, it just, it's really easy. And it's so much fun. fun. And it is fun. It is fun. You know, because you can sit there watching TV. You and go to the front first. Do I go to the front first? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Explain what you're doing. All right, with mine being a nine alt, usually you go around nine times. I go around 10 to 11. And then you go back from the back way. You know, she's probably put it back, she got she to the draw. <laughs> but nothing's gonna break that. You know, and it's simple. Uh, it's that easy. The, the day that I learned to do this was the night before the chick fight last year. Oh yeah. Yep. You know, uh, I'm, I'm notorious about waiting to the last minute to, you know, do whatever it is I need done. Okay, Ken, show me, show me how to tie this hook up so I don't know, you know, tomorrow when I go fishing. And he showed me one time, and, and of course I said, just get out of my way, you know. <laughs> and he was in my way. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it, it, and I didn't even have to practice two or three times. It, it is so easy. Can you explain and, that again? Do what? Can you explain that again? Yeah, you just take, you just take your line, and like on my hook, I go to the front. Yep. Let me get my glasses on and I'll have it hang up. But uh, I just go to the front and, and leave your hook line out. Hold on to it and then wrap around. And you don't want your, when you're wrapping around, you don't want it to cross. Uh, and of course, like I said, I've got a nine hole hook. So I'm going to go, I'm not counting now, but I would go nine. Nine-ish. <laughs> Nine-ish, for sure nine, and guarantee you it would probably be 11. And then, let me cut this right here. And then go, instead of going